Hey, hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to return to the subject of WD and hard drives Let's face it when it comes to the world of hard drives one of the biggest brands out there is Western Digital or WD and a couple of years ago I did a video discussing the different colors of hard drives available from WD because very early doors It became very clear that they kind of got ahead of a lot of the brands out there by creating a nice easy to follow guide on their platform with regards to picking the right hard drive for your needs following their color spectrum originally starting in black uh, blue and green now over time more drives are added to that lineup and more colors are added all of these drives have their own inherent advantages and much like the cutlery in the drawer or in your kitchen where there's different knives spreading butter or cutting steak or cutting bread different drives are better designed for better purposes but I have to remake these videos every couple of years because the ranges change. New drives arrive, old drives go, new capacities, new subsets and different kinds of drives within each family color end up arriving. So today we're gonna to go through the main range of hard drives available from WD within that color series. But before we go any further, um, we're gonna go with an honorable, honorable mention and a few disclaimers. Early doors, an honorable mention, I'm not gonna talk about Ultrastar in this video. They're not considered part of the WD hard drive family. And although they are a Western digital product, they are enterprise and they are very specifically data center and hyperscale based. They are not considered part of the WD Colors family, but if you're looking for high-end data center class drives or drives that are going to be under intense utilization 24-7 in a large raid array, do consider Ultrastar. Now, a few disclaimers regarding the presentation of today's video. All the prices you're going to see are correct as of October 2022. They are all arrived from WD's own website pricing structure there and their own WD shop. Another thing I was saying is with the UK pricing, I've included the tax for here in the UK, but for the US based prices, I've not included the tax in most cases. There's a couple of times I'll point out why. The reason being is tax does vary on different products in different areas, and ultimately it's just gonna be a lot easier to present it that way and keep things from a business perspective a lot easier for some of you out there. So do bear that in mind when you're looking at the price differences. The next thing to bear in mind is the warranty on most of these drives will either be three or five years. And again, I'll try and highlight it, but the majority of them are going to be three years when they're home based or five years when they are business based. Uh, next, um, unless I say otherwise, and there's very few exceptions to this, all of these drives are considered CMR, conventional magnetic recording, or PMR, perpendicular magnetic recording. There's only, I believe, two drives in this selection which do not conform to that, and I will highlight it. So, otherwise, if I don't say it, it means they are CMR or PMR. Another thing. The 18 and higher TB generation of drives from WD all arrive with something called OptiNand. Now, we are going to do a dedicated OptiNand video very, very soon, but OptiNand is um, a new innovation from WD where they have fitted a small area of, I believe, 64 gig, I'll have to check, but 64 gig of SSD flash storage on the drive. And what that is used for is lots of metadata and drive handling and basic, basic internal drive uh, systems have been moved over to this area of SSD and it allows the drive to perform exceptionally highly but also frees up space that would have been wasted on the platters inside thereby allowing those larger capacities to not only be available but also perform very well too. So again although I'm probably not going to highlight it any drive above about 18 TB so 18 to 20 to 22 they're going to have OptiNand on board. And finally when we talk about workload later, there's going to be figures where I state it in workload terabytes. That is per year. That is the amount of data these drives are designed to have written to them over the course of a year based on their um, warranty. So it's every year for, say, five years on an enterprise level drive. Now, unless I state otherwise, they are uh, 180 terabyte workload. There are pro and enterprise class drives in this lineup that give you a better workload rating but unless i state that take it as read that they are 180 terabyte annual workload so there you go that's the layout there's a big old lot of that at the beginning of this video let's crack on with this hopefully we've chapterized this and you can skip all of that if you choose now Probably the oldest generation and the oldest uh, WD Colors family, which is still around to this day, is WD Blue. It is designed for PC use, it's designed for low-end system use. It is 
a domestic class drive. If you're going to be running a low-end work PC and you're not running the OS from a single drive, or you're running the OS from an SSD, but you just need a nice bulk, easy, non-endurance drive that can spin up, spin down, and it's not going to be on 24-7, WD Blue is very much for you. Now, again, it's been around for a long time, and it's available in 3.5 inch, that's the larger desktop drives, and 2.5 inch, the smaller ones, designed predominantly for laptops and small systems. Arriving in as little as 320 gig, all the way up to 8 TB, Currently, uh, this series of drives have a you know a fairly affordable price point and are regularly on offer. Chances are there's a device in your home or workplace that has a WD Blue drive inside. They are SATA based. Pretty much all the drives we're going to talk about today are SATA, with the exception of one. Um, on top of that, again. They are predominantly CMR or PMR based, but it is worth highlighting that there are some of the smaller capacities which do have something called DMSMR, Drive Managed Shingle Magnetic Recording. That means that the, uh, the data is kind of layered like the tiles on a roof, and then later on during downtime, the drive gets to reorganize that. Now, bear in mind, if this was a larger um, multi-drive operation, SMR may not be suitable for some users, but in the case of a single drive or for archival, low level, warm, you know, even to lukewarm data, it's absolutely fine here. So don't be put off by that. And the cache on board these drives alongside uh, 5400 rotations per minute rating is between 32 megabytes and 128 megabytes cache on these drives. Very low level, very domestic and a low power consumption. Uh, now, in terms of pricing, uh, in the UK, these will start at about £48, up to, for the largest capacity, just over £200, about 205 nicker. In terms of a dollar, you are talking $45 US dollar, a peaking at 139 Remember that tax thing I mentioned earlier on. Now, in terms of performance, they are one of the lowest performing drives in the entire WD Colors range. Uh, about 150 to 180 megs in terms of sequential read, that's big block data, they're not going to blow anyone away, but they're not designed to blow people away. They're low power, single use, domestic class drives. So if you're looking for a drive that's incredibly low end, very easy to use, affordable, and you're not really going to expect much from it, just to sit there, shut up and do its job, maybe in a dock or an enclosure for backups, this drive is absolutely fine. But let's ramp things up. Let's talk about another legacy and long term WD um, Colors family drive that's been around for a while and is often overlooked, namely WD Green. At least that's what I would be saying if there was any WD Green. WD Green is pretty much gone these days for several reasons. When it first came to pass, it was kind of the energy efficient drive. It was the drives that may not have had performance that would blow you away, and even lower in some cases than that, the WD Blue we just talked about, but it was designed around being on for extended lengths of time and having a very low eco footprint, a very low energy consumption overall. Now, because of innovations in SSDs, of which WD Green still exists, and efficient design of drives over time, and the inevitable arrival of WD Red in NAS servers, the utilization and appeal of WD Green outside the laptop drives decreased rapidly. And it got to a point where WD Green, although energy concerns are still in the world, for those users, I would recommend an SSD for really low power consumption compared with a mechanical hard drive. And therefore, you can kind of see the reasoning why, despite WD Green being a key part of the early WD Colors family, it is no longer with us. But I mentioned it there, let's get on to the big one, probably one of the most publicized drives on this channel, and that would be your WD Red. Now, WD Red is the drive that is designed for NAS, Network Attached Storage. This is storage that can be accessed over the network or remotely over the internet and allows you tremendous fluid access to your data remotely. Now, in most NAS systems, you have multiple drives all combined together in something called a RAID, redundant array of independent disks, or redundant array of inexpensive disks if you're old school. Now, RAID takes multiple drives, combines them together, works out a system known as parity and redundancy, which allows the system to withstand one of those drives dying and allowing you to recover your data. And because of that, these systems, which are generally designed to be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, 12 months of the year, etc., etc., they need to be 
quite enduring. They need to give sustained performance. They have to have a very good spin up and spin down. And what that means is the drive, when it's needed to be accessed, needs to wake up and do its job. But then when it's not needed, go down and stop consuming too much power. But on top of that, RAID means all the drives are going to be read and written to at the same time. So you can't afford for one drive to be slower than the others or for one drive to be out of sync with the others. So a lot more engineering goes into a NAS hard drive. And with WD Red, since its first reveal back in 2012, the WD Red range has changed rapidly, taking over from WD Green, as I mentioned earlier on. And we do have a 10 years of WD Red video coming up. But WD Red has evolved rapidly over those years, integrating new features and services from the WD portfolio, as well as becoming not only one drive, but splintering into three different kinds of WD Red drive. So let's start with the earliest one, the oldest one. So we're just going to go with standard WD Red. Standard WD Red drives arrive currently in between two and 6TB. They arrive with a 5400 RPM and combined with 256 megabytes of memory and a three year warranty. It's designed for very small scale systems of about one to five bays. Now, WD with this drive designated very low end a uh, kind of solo home user use. They're designed for RAID, but by no means particularly rugged. Now, a few years ago, uh, they had to declare that these drives arrive with drive managed single magnetic recording, that DMSMR. And WD still maintain that these drives are still suitable for very small home low key operations. Also, they're priced quite affordably compared to the rest of the WD range because of that target market they're aiming for there. So these arrive with between 67, uh, they arrive at between 67 pounds and 142 pounds between that two and six dB, or 69 dollars up to 119 dollars. Very good price per terabyte rating there. And the performance, thanks to the um, increased cache on board, um, it's, it peaks at 180 megabytes per second there. So good numbers there, particularly in RAID utilization with multiple drives. But a lot of users aren't overly keen on having drive managed single magnetic recording drives in their RAID configuration. They may be running larger than five bay RAID arrays. They may be running ZFS. They may be running a system that's gonna be access and processing data so rapidly that the drives won't have sufficient time to reorganize and um, fragment the data on, the, uh, defragment the data on the disk accordingly. So for those users, WD then released WD Red plus wd red plus existed out of the wd red series and is far broader in its availability far broader in its capacity and overall has slowly become the more desirable drive of those two now wd red plus arrives in between 1 tb and 14 terabytes which is big 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 capacity there across multiple platters uh, that drive i believe runs on an eight platter design inside there which is incredibly innovative wait until we start talking about the bigger drives later on uh, with a between 5400 and 7200 at least in the um, 10 12 and 14 tb drives rpm and between 64 meg and 512 megabytes of cash once again scaling with the larger capacities arriving with a three-year warranty there's also a 2.5 inch mobile version version that's available in 1TB but again that I don't not 100% that drive still going to be around in a year or two maybe in the next time I make a video like this it will be on the honorable mentions now in terms of pricing the WD Red Plus series is very similar in price to the WD Red series just a little bit more expensive there arriving at 60 pounds and at its peak uh, capacity of 14 TB 380 pounds if you're in the US, it's going to cost you between $59 and $299 there. So again, more expensive than the standard red drives, but certainly a more robust drive overall, and particularly few users that are going to be running uh, between five and eight drives, certainly. But these still aren't the best of the WD Red portfolio. And for that, uh, I believe it was 2014, WD released the WD Red Pro series. Now, the Pro series are much more rugged high performance drives a little bit more comparable arguably to those data center class drives they bring a lot more to the party in terms of performance in terms of workload and ultimately they are designed for up to 24 bays of storage we're talking rack mount there so how do they arrive they arrive in between 2 tb and 22 
terabytes, an enormous drive. We already did a review of these on the channel, uh, arriving in a 10 platter design uh, with 2.2 terabytes per platter, that OptiNAN that we mentioned. This drive runs on a 7200 RPM fixed and no flexibility and 512 megabytes of cache on board alongside that OptiNAN to take care of internal operations of the drive. Um, it also arrives with a five year warranty and has a 300 terabyte workload rating there. So unlike every single drive we've talked about thus far, which has around um, a cap 180 TB per year um, workload, this has 300 TB workload. It is designed to withstand a lot more write operations. And with a larger RAID array, she bloody well hope so. Now in terms of pricing, they can range between 30 to 50 pounds more than the same capacity available on WD Red Plus. You're paying extra for the performance, the rugged design, also the larger capacities bring in Helo Seal technology, which allows the drive to have less drag in operations and therefore they can create thinner platters to pack more into the drives very, very easily. Um, starting at £100, they get up to £649 in dollars. It's $99 up to $599 overall, with a, a performance, impressively, of between 160 megabytes and 272 megabytes. An enormous improvement there of nearly 100 megs over most of the drives that we've talked about. The WD Red Plus peaks at 215 megabytes and these guys are still smashing it with the pros there but bear in mind they're more expensive they consume more power and they will be noisier in the larger capacity certainly anything above 8 tb they will make more noise so bear that in mind but when it comes to devices that are going to be on 24 7 a network attached storage device is a lot more varied in its applications whether you're going to use it for backups you're going to use it for vms you're going to use it for multimedia like plex you're going to use it for just data day use and streaming over DLNA. You might even be using it for surveillance with a bunch of cameras. Now, surveillance is a different beast, but luckily, when it comes to network attached storage drives in RED, WD also released drives that are quite similar to RED, but are geared far more towards surveillance. Let's talk about WD Purple. Now, what sets apart a WD Purple drive from a WD RED drive? Because let's face it, these purple drives, they're going to be inside a system that's got RAID across multiple drives, that's network accessible, and they're going to be on 24-7. That sounds exactly like WD Red, right? So why does WD Purple exist? Is it a con? No. Is it just for fad or branding? No. It has one very specific difference between WD Red. These drives are geared internally towards write more than read. WD Red drives are designed to have a balancing act of write and read. Maybe you want to access a bunch of data to watch, to enjoy from VMs, just all of it living on the drives, but sometimes you want to write data, you want to back up, you want to do lots of things. Whereas when it comes to surveillance systems, and particularly primary surveillance systems, these cameras, if you have four, six, eight, 12, 20 cameras across a home or business environment, all of these cameras are sending footage to the drives. And everyone knows that if you try to do multiple operations writing data to a hard drive, have you ever tried doing that with an external USB? It doesn't work. Mechanical hard drives are not very good at multi-input handling in the way that SSDs are, where they can handle lots of different exchanges at the same time. Now, the WD Purple drives being geared towards write, and particularly RAID write on a 24-7 environment, means that they can handle the enormous input task that's coming from multiple surveillance cameras at any given time. When you do have cameras set up in your home or business environment, you are going to access them probably 1% of the time. For every 100 hours they are recording and sending data, you might watch an hour, maybe not even that, maybe minutes, because for some reason you had to go into the footage archives and check for a car that was parked, look for an employee, check because there was a theft or a burglary or something like that. The result is that these drives do much less of a job supporting write than, uh, than read than they do write. Because in surveillance operations, if you don't have drives that can handle write loads and loads and loads, you won't have good footage and therefore the whole point of surveillance fails entirely. That's why WD Purple exists. Now, much like the other drives we talked about, WD Purple in its lifespan divulged into two different kinds of WD Purple drive. And the chief operation behind that, other than you know storage scale getting bigger and beyond that five to eight drive limit, 
there was AI operations. Now, AI operations require even faster write actions, but also need that read as well, and also generally need a lot more drives to increase and multiply the performance using the benefits of RAID. So let's start with WD Purple, the standard class one. Now the WD Purple standard class arrives in between 1 and 8 TB. The 1 to 8 TB drive arriving at a 5400 RPM with a weird 5640 RPM on one drive um, predominantly arrives in um, uh, CMR and PMR, but there is a drive managed SMR drive in there as well. Hence that really wonky um, RPM on one of those drives. Um, it has uh, arrived with 64 uh, meg, that can, um, 64 to 256 meg of cache, depending on the capacity, three years of warranty, and are designed to support up to 64 cameras in up to eight bays of storage and n um, between one to a couple of AI services, again, depending on the drive you use. By AI services, I mean uh, deep video analysis, but we'll get onto that in just a moment. Now, pricing, they start at just 50 quid, and they cap at the largest capacity of 450 quid. In terms of dollars, it goes from $49 up to $289. So again, very varied pricing between the two of them there. Again, factor in that tax. But there is an increasing number of devices arriving on the market that support AI services. Now I mentioned there deep video analysis. Deep video analysis is when the system isn't just taking the camera feeds, it's not just taking the live recordings, it's watching the cameras. And AI services is the difference between a camera like this that is just triggered by a motion of someone walking and a camera that knows the difference between a person, a vehicle, a dog, a tree, a car, um, a parked car, lines and geofencing, counting and more. And these are the things that people rely on these days in surveillance to save a lot of manpower and time. If you have a camera set up that's only triggered by motion, on a windy day, that camera is going to get 50 alerts every hour minimum. Whereas an AI supported camera will know the difference between a tree moving. It will know the difference if you set the camera to only notice people, it means every car in the world could drive past and it doesn't matter. And with things like facial recognition too and license plate re recognition as well, deep video analysis has really risen to the challenge for a lot of surveillance users that want to be able to get a surveillance solution that's smart enough to only tell you um, alerts and notifications when it's a genuine issue and not false alarms. Now, AI supported services, as mentioned, require a, tremendous, a, larger, a tre tremendously larger amount of bandwidth than that of traditional surveillance there because of the need for very quick data access and handling. So for these, you would go with the WD Red Pro AI series. Now, again, very comparable to the WD Red Pro series, but again, with that focus more on surveillance and write activity, they, are, they start at eight terabytes and they end at 22 terabytes. Again, Optinand, again, 10 platters, and again, 7200 over 512 megabytes of cache. Again, depending on the drive you go for, the uh, 7200 RPM will stay, but um, the cache will go as low as 256 meg. Still a large amount of cache because of those right operations and internal handling. Um, the five year warranty drive also has a 550 terabyte workload like the Pro Drive, so huge endurance for access and write. And in surveillance, it's gonna be a bigger deal than others because in surveillance, people have retention policies where they'll have the cameras recording nonstop, but you're not gonna to want to keep years of recording. Eventually, you have a period of seven days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, where the recordings will overwrite the oldest recordings. So in that time, depending on the number of cameras and the amount of footage being recorded, having good sustained durability on drives is going to be even more important than any other scenario I just described. So again, these drives are the most expensive surveillance drives in WD's portfolio, but supporting up to 64 cameras again, but this time also 32 AI operated camera services. They're a lot beefier and up to a lot more work actively. They start at £237 up to £649 and in terms of US dollar starting at, I'm looking at my notes, $260 up to $599 and in terms of performance they are one of the highest performing drives other than the Pro. They're starting at 245 megabytes per second and peaking at 265 
at the larger capacities. That is a high, high performance drive there. Now, I've mentioned the word performance. That's an interesting point there because the last two drives on our setup here are very much about performance users, but a different kind of performance users. And if you're a gamer in the last eight years, you're gonna know the next drive I'm gonna talk about. It is the gamer focus, the pro editor focus, and post-production 4K focused WD Black. Now, WD Black is one of the earliest drives in the WD Colors portfolio. It still arrives to date in a 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch version. There were hybrid drives known as the WD Black G2 and hybrid storage drives that had accessible SSD storage on a, a mechanical drive for OS versus archive storage, but they went out of fashion and really opt-in and has kind of gone forward with that in a different way with onboard uh, flash for in terms of drive improvement. But the rest of the WD Black series has kind of existed since the beginning. The two and a half inch drives for laptop users and low level gamer users, or people that want it in a gamer laptop for their archive storage, while the games and the OS you know, boots off an NVMe SSD or something, are still pretty appealing. Starting at 320 gig and peaking at one TB in storage capacity, these are 7200 RPM drives, which are predominantly PMR and SMR, but it's worth highlighting that if you go for the nine millimeter height drives, they are drive managed SMR, so do bear that in mind. They also arrive with five years of manufacturer's warranty and due to their lesser application compared with the number of drives on the list are weirdly affordable. And if you were considering a WD Blue drive earlier, I would recommend seeing what the price of a WD Black drive is because you do get a lot more performance. To put it into perspective, starting at 63 pounds and peaking at just 72 pounds for a terabyte, they're actually pretty affordable in that 2.5 inch level. In terms of dollars, it's $49 to $189 due to you know lack of stock, I think, if you look at WD's own website. But the performance is, oh, sorry, $54 to $69. Read my notes wrong there, I do apologize. Um, but in terms of performance, this little two and a half inch drive can give you 185 megs of performance. It's got fewer platters, it's a lot smaller, and it's giving you a higher performance than the WD Blue series we mentioned earlier and the WD uh, Greens when they were around. And that's a two and a half inch drive too. But what about the three and a half inch drive series? Those drives have really got some beefy performance inside them for single drive utilization. Do bear in mind, again, they're not designed for RAID. They're not designed for 24 seven utilization, but they do still provide a tremendous amount of endurance and performance. Now, uh, the WD Black three and a half inch series arrives at 7200 RPM and 256 meg on board uh, between 500 gig and 10 TB of storage. But again, at the 10 TB, they're gonna get noisy. If you're a gamer, or a programmer, live streamer, bear that in mind. Um, they arrive with five years of manufacturer's warranty with performance that starts at 227 megabytes per second and peaks at 263 megabytes per second. These are beefy performing drives. Price-wise, 87 pounds uh, up to 365 pounds and in dollars, $44 up to $339, so they're not cheap either. But I will say, much like the WD Reds, you do often see WD Black hard drives and SSDs on sale. Not just the big events like Prime Day and Black Friday, but regularly on other sites. So if you're about to pull the trigger on a WD Black drive, maybe take an extra moment and shop around. You may get a bit of a bargain there. But let's talk about the final drive on this lineup. It's a very concise and arguably a hugely overlooked drive. It's probably one of the youngest drive families in the whole series of WD Colors, but I would argue it's by far the best. I am of course talking about WD Gold. Now, do you remember at the beginning when I said to you, we're not gonna include Ultrastar because it's not, not part of the WD Colors series and it's designed for data center? Well, the other reason for that was because when it comes to data center, WD Gold is part of the WD Colors family for those hyperscale users and data center applications there. WD Gold drives are ridiculously well built. They start at one TB and they end at 22 TB. Again, 10 platters, uh, opt-in and all of that, PMR, CMR, ready to rock. 100, uh, 7200 um, RPM as well. Uh, with a five year warranty on board and a staggering 550 terabyte workload there, they are beefy, beefy, beefy drives. They're noisy drives, but they are, of all the drives I've talked about, the most enduring. Their performance starts at the lowest capacities at 251 megs. That's the lowest, but they are the 
fastest drive in the whole of the WD Colors uh, spectrum with a reported sequential read performance of 291 megabytes per second. Not only does that almost half saturate the whole of SATA, it's getting close to the speed of first, second and third gen SSDs. That is a ridiculously high performance hard drive inside there with a great response of time, but bear in mind, they are a bit noisy and they are very power hungry. They are designed for data center. They are designed for wall sized rack cabinets. Also price wise, they are not cheap. Starting at 90 pounds and peaking at 649 pounds and in US dollars, $80 peaking at $599. They are beefy drives, but they're also designed to be purchased in bulk. So you will often find when purchasing WD Gold that you can get bulk discounts in a number of places. Though some retailers will not sell you a single WD Gold drive. They are meant to be deployed in bulk and often will be sold in bulk. Not all retailers do that, but you will find it often. And if you need a very specific capacity do not be surprised if you're forced to buy on mass for these kind of drives but that is it that is the current 2022 range of wd colors drives and i hope this video has helped you at least understand a little bit which one of these drives is better suited to your storage needs there should be an article linked in the description that will take you through to nas compares where we've broken all of the model ids down and the strengths and the weaknesses of each family as well as comparing a number of them there's also drives there that are no longer available like the velociraptor they're kind of historical pieces right now that are worth a look just for the fun if you've enjoyed this click like if you want to learn more about this subject i've got a, a wd colors ssd video coming soon alongside my 10 years of wd red video that's in production right now so do stay tuned and subscribe for those if you need help choosing the right drive for your needs there's the links i've mentioned in the description that will take you to guides at nas compares as well as links to buy these uh, drives at amazon so if you were planning to get them from amazon and again you can buy them from anywhere you want but if you were going to choose amazon anyway why not use those links? It costs you nothing, and we at NAS Compares get a kickback. Just me and Eddie here, but it helps us make more and more of this content and do what we do. Otherwise, if you need help, use the free advice section over on NAS Compares, or use the free community forum alongside me, Eddie, and other NAS users to help answer your questions. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. We interrupt today's video to talk about Ask NAS Compares, our support forum that Eddie's been working on that allows us to help more, even more people. The NAS community is over there. You can go there if you've got any questions for your data storage setup, or if you want to make a little bit of money on the side, answer some of those questions and maybe earn some tips. That's right. This is Ask NAS Compares, our community forum. It is early days. It is a bit rough around the edges, but it is going to get bigger and better as time wears on. Right now, you can go ahead and create an account. You can search for other posts that may relate to your own individual data storage or or inquiry or you can go ahead and create the post very very easily when you do you can head over into those and different users will try to answer your question such as tribal hound here giving a great answer here on whether you should keep this old qnat nas when you do that it could be uh, another user it could be me it could be eddie and users on here are free to create their own ko-fi account it is completely free and from there earn tips and coffees from other users who are grateful for that advice we don't want any of this money it's all for you 100 you get to keep whatever you make we are just interested in the greater nas community getting support if you want to learn more go to the link in the description but back to the video